the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I live in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. That's right, you tell him, little buddy. You tell the world you listen to the late night. Late night with Jerry was live worldwide. And the beautiful Kelly Holland out of Charm City. Welcome, Baltimore. Welcome, Maryland. Welcome, welcome, East Coast. And all our friends and family overseas. What's up, what's up, South Africa? That's right. And I appreciate my man, uh, the generous call me from Africa, Langus. 5.30 this morning. Yeah, my man. He missed the Batman. That's right. I don't know if I was okay. But anyway, y'all, we having great weather here. I know Kelly Holland is enjoying it. What's going on, Kelly Howell? What's going on in your world? What's up? Hey, 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 Batman. Hey, Baltimore. How's everybody? How are we doing today? Good. Great night. Yeah, Great we, weather. Yeah, we're good on the East Coast. Tops are down. Yeah, we're yeah. driving our convertibles. Yeah, man. I, you know, I was I was in the garage and I, I looked over my ride and I saw I had the windows down and the roof was still open. <laughs> I must be going. I, I think I was planning to go somewhere, but my daughter blocked me in. <laughs> so, I, oh. so I had to take the Jeep. Yeah. It's okay. I know. I'm like, Mama, I wake you up out your sleep. Come move your car. <laughs> <laughs> she it's all class. mine. It's all my driveway. Yeah, she, she get, a, get, get out my way. You're inconveniencing me. Yeah, she had to take her <laughs> class. I didn't want to bother her. You know how you got to be oh, at home, you know. She was working, yeah. learning. Right. Well, good daddy. Yeah, baby girl in grad school, man. I was, I was happy about that. <laughs> oh, she went straight to grad school, no break? No, she did. She took a break. Yep, she took okay. a year off. Yeah. Took a year. And went right back to it. Yeah, yeah, grad school was really easy compared to getting your bachelor's degree. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like everything after that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Just for them two years of study and know. you get out. Yeah. <laughs> Hoping to be specializing in something. <laughs> yeah, man. Them accelerated programs till you go straight through, no breaks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool, well, man. the normal um, pace is about two years, um, and that's taking uh, summer off and spring and winter off. Yeah, but so if she's doing accelerated, doing she's getting those seven yeah. week classes. She's yeah. going to school full time all year round. She'll probably be done in like a year and a month. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, good the plan. for her. That's the plan. We love the ambitious youth. Keep that's it right. Good. Keep it. And baby up. boy said he might do the same thing. He he told my wife. He, well, he had mentioned it to me that he was after he found out his his baby sister. I mean, his older sister was going back. He said he was going to do the same thing. School is inspiring for people that do well in college. Like once you get the rhythm of the homework or the mm-hmm. assignments, you're you're pretty good. And you know, um, now that you're doing on the uh, graduate level the caseload isn't as hard right, right. Um, or as long so I, I found um, graduate school to be very exciting I enjoyed every bit of it the majority of my classes were online which was very convenient for a working mom um, so you know you're not working get education <laughs> get your education get some training get some on the job training you'd be surprised how your resume stacks up yeah. You know, I got all of my Harvard Business School certificates mm-hmm. from a job that had the software and they wanted us to learn. And yeah, so I learned I that. Yeah. people don't even look at all the benefits that jobs offer. No, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's how you better yourself. You know, I went in. Uh, I was um, I got I got uh, accepted in a, a national leadership development program. Oh, and that's was, dope. Cause, and to, you know what? It shows off, Batman, because you are a great leader, very humble. You get your point across. You get work done. But you always know how to empathize. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Batman Thank Batman you. had given me many humility days, you know. <laughs> to say yeah, that, was a, that was a big <laughs> lesson in that program because it, it was three years and, mm-hmm. you know, it was 25 of us. And, 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 and believe it or not. I probably was the only person that had two degrees. Everybody else had like law degrees, doctorates and everything. But Mm -hmm. because I was so used to doing, you know, being a graphic, when you go to school for graphic design, them projects, they be throwing them projects at you. 
mm-hmm. left and right. Every time you turn around, you, you need something turned in. So I got so used to that, you know, raising two kids. In the pace. If, you know, and then and then I had an older kid in college at the same time, too. Mm-hmm. You know, you learn to We talking about make a grown work. man back yeah, in school, right? right? You make, yeah, <laughs> making it work, man. And, um, mm-hmm. of course, when you, you know, when you make some friends and you guys have the same things in common, like raising a family, home, home ownership, you mm-hmm. work together. You know, you look out for each exactly. other. And that, and that was what taught me team teamwork, you know. Teamwork mm-hmm. make the dream work. Cause that, teamwork it was funny does because, make the um, dream work. I'm not sure. We if don't she always was, have the ideas, the fortitude. Yeah. We don't always have it exactly. Yeah, it was funny because I'm not sure if she was on your show, but uh, one of my good friends, Kenya. She, I remember she she looked at me, we were, we were choosing our classes and everything. You know, it was like we was all coming back from the summer, and she said. You only got two classes, man. You're gonna be here forever. <laughs> she walked me back <laughs> to the to the register and, and gave me a full load. I was like, wait a minute, I got a full time job. We all do. Exactly, we all do. Pick up some more we classes. All do. But listen, listen. One class makes you a college student. Go at your own pace, so you can handle all of that. I appreciate me, it. I wanted though. to graduate. I faster, really get out so of that. I did yeah. four classes. Yeah. Yeah, for my graduate, but uh, my bachelor's, please. I was one class in it for a couple years. Then I saw I was getting close to the end, so the most I took yeah. was three. Because <laughs> as you yeah, think, you're a working there. parent. You it's can't right. fall short. And the only grade that keep your GPA up is an A. No yep, A minus, right. right. no Bs. Yeah. That's, that's a bad word to me. Yeah. Uh, a minus, I hate them. Yeah, you don't bring GPA. my GPA yeah. down. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, GPA. I'm going for honors. I'm yeah. going Oh, for honest, and that's what you're doing. Yeah, I got one of them yeah, sumas. Exactly. One of them Yeah, I got, I got the, I got a suma. I got a yeah. cum, cum. So wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Cum laude. That's how my daddy used to say it. <laughs> I, got, I got the, I got the lowest honor bachelor's. Then I get the master school. I hit magnum, and they're like, "Oh, we don't do honors in graduate school." I'm like, "Whatever." I ordered a plaque and everything. Yeah. Batman put it right on okay, my, uh, okay. <laughs> put it right on my, my. Uh, Frame degree, yeah. magnum cum laude. I had to, I had to bust some grades because my mom was a, a school teacher and my mother in law oh, was a see. school teacher. My wife was, uh, she was, man, she she bust them grades too. She was straight A, and then my daughter, she straight A, Jordan straight A. They That's actually, right. I think I told they 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 done better in college than they did in high school because I said if you guys would did this in high school, you would have been going for free. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> bears no mind. <laughs> <laughs> they do what they want. But you're absolutely right. You know, we take on that mature um, role. You know, mm-hmm. we just take it on. And, you know, I definitely started college fresh out of high school. That was not for me. I had to mature. I had to see what life was yeah, really right about. about you know, <laughs> you know, I'm fresh out my mama's house. I really had to experience life for myself to realize I'm I'm doing a disservice to my children if I'm stuck in this job with no education. Yeah, they can right. continue to lowball me. They can continue to not excel me in different areas of training and leadership or cross training. And so you you just got to level yourself up. The the earlier the better. Right. Mm. But <laughs> sometimes we need to see it for ourselves. So That's shout out right. to all of the returning graduates. You know, they going to school in their thirties and forties and up, you know, uh, you know, it, it takes tenacity. And, and then on top of that, those mandatory math classes. Boy. We ain't talk about that. <laughs> well, look, Batman time is up. It's 10, 10. It's time to let our guests out of the queue. Batman. Mr. Our oh, author, no, Terrence. Uh, Frederick. I forgot Terrence last name. What was it? Terrence Frederick. Ter- okay. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm looking at his name when <laughs> the cube is like. I'm always ready. Letters. That man, you can count on Frederick, me to have your right. back. Mr. Frederick is here. Is he here to talk about his book and share yeah. his journey? I know Kelly gonna get Eat some good slow. stuff out of him. There's stuff that people don't know. Pe- I wonder stuff that he don't want people to know. <laughs> <laughs> Get it out of him. I don't know. He might he might know what I'm gonna say. He's a prophet. And so yeah, we'll you already know the interview. <laughs> Mr. Frederick, welcome to late night radio. How you doing, sir? Did you have your coffee? Did you have your tea? Are you ready? What's good, grace and peace. I believe I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And we, and we appreciate you coming here, man, and um, you know, sharing your journey. And I'm going to sit back and listen to you guys. Um, thank you, Kelly, for the ten minutes you sp- you gave me. I appreciate you. I spare it every show, <laughs> right. Batman, just All for right. you. <laughs> Y'all have a great show. I'm ready if you need. All right. 
Thanks, Batman. Right, and so thank me. you, Terrence Frederick, for joining us this evening on Late Night. Please let our listeners know who you are and what it is that you do. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, I am from Sumter, South Carolina, um, mm-hmm. by way of Charleston, South Carolina. But my I don't know if y'all are familiar with South CAC and um, what's going on with Shaw Air Force Base, but my father was in the military, and so I'm a military brat. And came up through the different ranks of um, my parents going through the Baptist Church, Pentecostal, Kojic, Mm -hmm. Word of Faith movement, Charismatic movement. And, you know, I was wilding out while they were pursuing God. So I have the (laughs) classical prodigal son story. Oh, really? Uh, I want to hear that. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, he he exposed me to the, I I really had a, a good life, but I chose to be with the knuckleheads and and get out there and then because i came up in christ um it was more so we just believed that you know jesus is right and there's no knowledge anywhere else and then and he is right he is he is the truth but i learned so many things that we didn't learn in church Mm. by five percent nation of gods and earths i was exposed to and then got into some other things so it got wild for a minute but i found my way back home and um then I just started pursuing the things of God and just came up through the ranks. We can get into that story a little bit more later, but a little later, still an intro. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to sum it up that I in, uh, eventually ended up going into evangelism because of the walk that I came out of. And then the Lord started um, impressing upon me to be a watchman on the wall. He um, showed me Ezekiel 33 and told me mm-hmm. the blood would be on my hands if I didn't sound the alarm, blow the horn in Zion. So I began mm-hmm. to go into the prophetic ministry and then began to start understanding spiritual warfare and mm-hmm. got exposed to demonology, the occult and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot was in that. And But then the crazy thing is the more I began to move into things of God on one end, the more my perversion on the other end that I never did get handled messed my whole life up. I ended up getting divorced, had to rebuild and come back and got remarried. But the craziness was I thought that my prodigal son story was just in me backsliding when I was a teenager. But it really actually happened again. It carried Mm -hmm. on. Really, that's right. It carried on all throughout the ministry because it was untouched areas. I would deal with all kind of other things, but that area of perversion, self-control, you know, controlling your flesh and, you know, not just preaching and, and laying hands on the sick and casting out demons, Ladies walking man. in integrity and all that kind of stuff. So, I understand. So, so. He, he said, I can got everything, Lord, but these women and these, these skirts. Women, that's, what that's what it is. I you know what? You. I, I've always wondered about that dynamic, not to get all up in your business, but like you come... I don't know. My sense of church is my sense of home, especially if you're under good guidance. Sometimes we got these pastors that happen to have a congregation and they, they, they to the left. It's, 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 mm-hmm. it's, it's just, it's yeah. over there. They over there. And, and you know, and then when you find your place where you can be fed, you're well, there's no chaos around your bishop, and, you know, and when yeah. I'm in those atmospheres i truly don't understand why women still are seeking power from this person like he has power and now you're attracted to it he's he's off limits ladies (laughs) you can mess with any of these heathens in this pulpit Mm. (laughs) but the mission they're drawn to that anointing and 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 a lot they're drawn for a real purpose but a lot of times depending on the integrity of the man that would determine if he's going to manipulate that purpose while they were drawn in the first place. So, yeah, you're absolutely but they right. are really drawn to, I'm, I'm thinking about the woman at the well. I think the way, when I look at how Christ was talking to her, I feel like at one point she was ready to drop him for him because she was like, <laughs> <laughs> and he had to turn it back. He had to turn it back to what he was talking about. You ever like, seen that in that scripture? <laughs> no, I didn't see that. I thought, you know, he he helped them get their their um their buckets filled so they could take care of watering the animals or the flock or something. And then, and their father was like, "How'd you get done so fast? Invite that man in." And that was the culture at that time. I never. 
thought she was sitting there. So when you there. go back to that story, if you look at it again, because he was calling out that she had, you know, uh, these different husbands, right? Mm-hmm. And the one you living with now, um, that you with now is not your husband. And he goes into that. And at one point. Oh, I forgot I all about that part. I just made it all. Yeah, at one up. point, he was like, uh, oh, you know, you got this water. He was talking about, you know, the Holy Spirit. She, I believe she was on something else. Somebody said, you reading into that. <laughs> But just look at it again. <laughs> I tell people, I say, read your Bible. That thing is better than a soap opera, baby. It's better than reality it's TV. You can connect it's with it. You definitely can. It's interesting. <laughs> you know, I'd be on YouTube learning more. Like, where's the apocrypha? I need the missing books right. now. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I'm in there for everybody. That's what I love right. about the scriptures, that they speak to you on all levels. <laughs> But what about that extended research? You spoke about demonology, something that I also tried to watch on YouTube. But it's very true. It's very, very true. And God even says in his in his word, but he also says to not focus on that. Don't pay attention to it. Don't feed into right. it. And and I believe, and then he says, Love me. And those that don't know me, I don't know them. Okay, well, that's how it goes then. So, so I know you, Lord, have favor on me. The last thing I want is to be caught up by this world. You know, because it happens right. happens so fast, you don't even realize it sometimes. And then sometimes you pursue it. Oh, it's a Friday night. I'm ready for whatever's going on. Okay, maybe. But we grown now. Like, mm-hmm. you know. We got to act accordingly. You know what? I'm so glad to hear that you're a real guy. You know, just a real dude. Um, and you're and you're and you're working as a shepherd for these sheep. You're doing your part in God's ministry. You're you're doing the gift that He put inside of you, but He had to break you. And you spoke he on that. Yeah, and sometimes yeah, we don't real. we don't get it till we get broken, broken, and we'll keep getting broken so we can call mm. upon him to pull us up. He makes it so you can't nobody help you but him. <laughs> Are you ready? To, you ready to love me again? You ready to acknowledge me again? You ready to honor me again? And it's just like that parent child relationship. That's how I see my savior. That's my daddy. <laughs> when you were talking about that just now, I was mm-hmm. thinking about CC Winans' song when she was talking about being blessed, broken, and given it's again and again. Time. I don't know if you remember that song. Everything uh, but it about Winans is great. Go I'm ahead. I'm telling you. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you. And so just that mindset of no matter where we are in our life, there's a place where he where we get broken again. And we have to get rebuilt back up, but it's all so that we can be distributed out as bread and that we can actually bring them in. And I I believe that my ministry now shifted because now I'm not even really focused on. I had the it was all about the poetry, the rap, um, the prophetic, building all that together. But I had a whole lot of flesh going on in that, too. So Mm -hmm. it was a lot of soulish stuff going on, not just spiritual. And a lot of people don't realize the ministries, a lot of times, who focus on demonology, it's a lot of demons that's up in there that they hosting and keeping. And I'm not saying yeah. all ministries, all deliverance ministries, but you have no, people you on different levels it. of right. You have p- people on different levels of maturity playing mm-hmm. with things, ancient things that they don't even understand, and you can't play mm-hmm. with God or play with the devil because mm-hmm. you're gonna get caught up, and then you end up yeah. being off, worse off than you started so that's what i i have a ministry to the young ministers the novices the young prophets coming up who have a lot of zeal a lot of charisma a lot of gifts Mm -hmm. but they struggle in that area exactly people expect perfection and nobody's perfect but jesus that's why he was out sacrificed we're not perfect but we could be dang near if we just lean on our savior amen amen to that and Um, and, and really just be real with where you are you know even if you're not on that level you can still minister to people on the level you are and just being real with where you are not trying to be something that you're not that's that's how i look at it and when you're pure at heart, people can definitely relate. No one likes the fluff because you're really not helping right. me. Just tell me what I need to hear. And then you hear about those big ministers or preachers or whatever their title was. And, you know, they're, they're, they're known nationwide, international. They have TV shows and this, that and the other. And you'll see them since they're in the media. They live by the media. Sometimes yep. that media exposes what their demons is and it brings them down. You live by the media. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're going to 
you <laughs> gonna, on. Okay, you're going to trip over something. And so we yeah. can name the scandals or the Catholic Church or <laughs> we can name the scandals. You can go um, but them. You but what it, none of that is unique to the Bible. None of that is unique to our Savior. None of that is brand new. You can right. always come home, just like you, you said, to the prodigal son. So let's get into it. Who was Mr. Terrence Frederick before he was the independent author, regional conference speaker, mentor with the heart of God and budding artists, musical artists, and prophetic <laughs> ministers? Who were you before you got that long <laughs> sentence of a title? <laughs> I said knucklehead. Uh, I was one of those people, so I was listening to you all in the intro, and I was mm-hmm. said, I said they got, you could tell that academic spirit is on them. That spirit of excellence mm-hmm. is on them. And mm-hmm. I love that. My sisters, um, my one of my sisters, and I'm going to get to me in a minute, but just mm-hmm. to give you the context of the family I came up in, one of my sisters is um, a lawyer in the Air Force. The other one is the OBGYN okay, um, in Texas. Big money. <laughs> so, yeah, they're making big money. But I was mm-hmm. the one that, you know, was just trying to make sure I could find where the party's at, where the girl's black at, sheep, whatever. So I was like the black sheep doing the mm-hmm. opposite. Still coming from the same stock, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm applying it in the wrong way. So mm-hmm. anything I could get into, I was trying to get into. So I got most of my knowledge about God, wisdom, life that was out there in the street, mm-hmm. even though I wasn't supposed to be out there anyway. So I see I'm not people a like cat. <laughs> Look, as an educator, I see kids like you. I'm like, yo, you live down the street. Calm down. <laughs> like, yeah, calm down. And they be the ones that do the most. You know that, right? right? They, they want to prove that something. Show I'm like, you know, it's okay if you're not that guy. You don't know what it took for that guy to be that guy in middle school, bro. Like, this is just middle right. school. <laughs> like, like, calm down. Oh, <laughs> this ain't real exactly. life. That child probably in a group home. You don't know his real life. Like, stop trying to, you know, associate stop like. Exactly. It's okay that you're loved. It's okay that you was. And I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story about that. That's interesting because I have one of my partners. He's ex. He's a um. He's a preacher now. A pastor. He's an ex pimp. But we grew up together. It's, the, it's and a he bunch said, of those too. Ex pimps. <laughs> and he, but we grew up and together, did, right? And, right. And he told me when I was when I was in your parents' house, seeing your mother and father loving on each other. Mm-hmm. That's why I wanted to go over there. You were trying to get out in the streets and come to this dysfunction. I wanted mm-hmm. to just sit in your house and see what a man and a woman look like in love with each other. How about and that? so I was I was jealous of what you had and you didn't even respect what you had. And I have many stories of friends like me. Took it for granted. That's what we did when we're not mm-hmm. paying attention to the greater picture. We already have a blessed life. But we looking for something right. that's not a part of it. Whereas other people, they've never seen your blessed life before. And now they're marveled by it. They want to hang with you. They want to be around you. They need your energy, your spirit, and all that good love that you get. Maybe they can get a little bit of love if they come over there, you know? So yeah. <laughs> I definitely I want, understand. Want to see it. I, I want to see it in operation. I want to see what this looks like because I believe and I know this is what is normal. But my life is so it, it's so toxic. Mm-hmm. That it's like a marvel to me to just see a woman and a man in love with each other and sitting and her sitting in his lap in these Aww. days and times. So, so these are the things that I took for granted. But the story with that, my mom got pregnant with me when she was 14. She met my um, dad. Uh, I think she was he was 14 and she was 13. She got pregnant at 14. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, back in the day, it was a big thing with that. So they decided to keep me. But they were born out of, you know, projects on both sides. So they were born out of that. And so your parents are the real story. They're the real story. So yes, I'm I coming hear. from that. Yeah, I'm it coming is. from that. But it's, it's what I witnessed, even with my faith and seeing what it was. I always knew what it was supposed to be. Even though okay. I would stay away, but I'm they so glad you're acknowledging that, you know, because they made the model that your friends are, you know, kind of jealous about a little bit, but in a healthy way, you know, they're, they're seeking right. that. And, and that's something that some kids don't have. Like me, myself, I was married for 17 years. And when we finally got divorced, my son was just eight. You know, he don't mm-hmm. know about that. You know, now he's looking like, is dad coming over? Is dad doing this? Is dad going to do that? And the dynamic is different. Exactly. So when you take that away, you grew up in a 
two parent household. Now it's just a single parent. You kind of become like, you know, a statistic kind of, but you have exactly. two parents. They, they've, they've worked hard to br- provide you all another lifestyle that did not come from them. Right. <laughs> that was amazing. That's it. That was amazing. That's a, that, and and I feel I feel like um there are many people out there trying to be trying to be just like that something mm-hmm. that they actually do because they think it's not cool to have a testimony where I didn't go astray and God would tell me I don't care how many times I open the door for you to tell your testimony I want you to let people know that's not the greatest witness that you went out <laughs> and, and did some stupid stuff and came back like the greatest witness is somebody learned the truth from their youth and upheld that mm-hmm. and stay with it, even going into their old age. Like, mm-hmm. but we all have our own story, but I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like the oh, we're not story of there. rebellion is glamorous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> not it's not it's a childish behavior it's a childish thing and that's why you get that out in your childhood ages that's why um um youth records are sealed they don't follow them into adulthood that's you know good. They, they, exactly that's exactly why don't judge me based on what i did as a child unless i killed somebody then that's probably public information <laughs> but but, right. but even still gonna get out we're gonna get out there <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna do some fingerprints but anyway let's move forward um so you had these this rebellious behavior when you were the youth and then you said like the first marriage didn't work and you kind of had to reset was that the second time god had to snatch you up or was that the first time? Yeah, yeah. So we'll say we'll say that's the third time. Oh, <laughs> we'll say that. Okay. Let's talk that, about it. <laughs> you so that's the like third you. time. <laughs> so what happened is the whole thing with the women thing. I was wilding out mm-hmm. in ministry. Had a, a traveling music ministry. Ended up mm-hmm. wilding out, and it created a scandal. Right. So it was, I was one of those Ooh, scandals. You became a church scandal. Did you? Have I, to I became a church. And and the biggest thing with that is with the watchmen and the prophets, we were always calling out people who were not living right. So <laughs> and we were very harsh, very harsh and strong in our judgments, pulling up. So you knew you was cat calling yeah. the kettle black. You knew. <laughs> OK. All right. See, this is just, see, this is what happened. Though. What it was, was some of that stuff was done earlier. Right. OK. And then I just tried to move Fight past it. it not really mm-hmm. bring it out just okay we're done with that we did that it's over <laughs> and then it came back later like nah I'm, i want to remember the time <laughs> so <laughs> people start pulling out memories from way back and then it kind of blew up later like after i moved past that that that's when it came out so because Aww. i knew and i know why he did that too he, he wanted to make sure that i would be able to withstand that because if it was brought out while i was still in it I probably in that state of mind I was in, uh, I probably would have lost it, you know, but I had to be at a place where I was mature enough to deal with the critique, which was right that I had messed up. I messed around. I knew better. And I also squandered the opportunity that my parents in ministry gave me to have influence Mm -hmm. in the church and and almost ruin the church, you know, as far as that. So he held, held them together, but that, shame was on me so i had to get broken down i relocated and he had to build me back up again and that's when i you know got married again and started the process over but then i had to learn about communication again because Mm -hmm. i thought that i was i could just go into a new marriage from the collective wisdom that i gained over 20 years of being in my other marriage but this Mm -hmm. is a whole new woman so Mm -hmm. that went left for a good while too (laughs) All right, hey, hey, she stuck by you. Y'all get that communication and respect down. You can conquer anything, anything. You can conquer. anything. But that's where the wisdom came from. Even from the book, it's about wisdom and communication. My and very it's about next question: learning how to how to interact with each other and build with each other, and you know all kind of things that relate. Title to of your book. That's uh, Deep Flow. Um, okay, and, and w, you got flow, the period stuff. So <laughs> Give me the acronym. What is it? <laughs> Well, in this situation, I, I'm going to give you the acronym, um, but y'all will get the full breakdown because I like to do super acronyms where I okay. do more than one. But the main thing is deliberate, um, edifying, encouraging, and prophetic flow. And it's really talking about 
each one of those things deal with different dimensions of communication. And of course, mm -hmm. flow is flow. How you flow, how you communicate your chemistry with other people, how you do what you do. Um, but it's deeper than that, too, because the flow should come from the spirit and he should be directing our flow, how we should be flowing. So, mm -hmm. but the deep flow, the, the deep, when I say deliberate, it's about being intentional, strategic, because one of my main focuses is dealing with introvert, um, people who are consider themselves to be introverts. Okay. Because a lot of times they struggle with, they have a lot of things to say, but they struggle with even gaining the airtime or getting the opportunity to get out what they want to say. And then they may not even want to talk about anything unless it's something interesting to them. But mm -hmm. the book is about letting them know when you want to engage and when you have to engage with people who you're supposed to be building with, here are some strategies to help you, you know, deal with these disagreements, these disagreements, the silences, the, you know, the secret wars that go on, the subconscious, you know, jabs and everything that goes on in close relationships. <laughs> Absolutely. You get on my nerves. You get on my damn nerves. Leave me alone. Good morning. <laughs> you brush your teeth yet before you start looking at me like that? <laughs> but y'all friends yeah. You know it. You know it. You know it. We get the people though. closest to us the worst sometimes. Sometimes. You are absolutely right. Um, but I'm so encouraged by your book, um, Deliberate Edifying encouraging prophetic conversations when did you realize you had a gift man i see the prophet all over your 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 media kit when did you find out you had that gift it's one thing to preach it's a whole nother thing to be a prophet now god gives us gifts sometimes it takes us a while to recognize and use it the right way but when did you feel that you had some foresight well that's a great question and i do want to clarify that um mm -hmm. so my office my mantle is not um uh, the office of a prophet, but I'm glad you asked about the gift because mm -hmm. there are many people who are gifted in the prophetic who are not called to be prophets, mm -hmm. but they, but really the body of Christ at large to be a prophetic people. He said, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So mm -hmm. we should all understand that there's a spirit of prophecy that should flow through us. But I realized that I was gifted in the prophetic and thought that I was a prophet. Um, well, those are two different times. So when I realized I had the gift was way younger when I was mm -hmm. young. Just, you know, I used to make music and sing and most of a lot of my songs would be prophetic and the song of the Lord and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, my mom is a prophet. So I was under under that um, atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Oh, it passed that down. Well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it passed down. And so that part was there. Um, but I learned more about the prophetic when I was um, drawn to the ministry of uh, Dr. Paula Price. She was one of them. And even um, John Eckhart and some other people mm -hmm. um, that I started reading their books when I started getting serious about warfare. And then the prophetic began to, it, it began to really show me what I was already operating in, but I didn't have a name or title for it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the type of uh, prophetic voice that really, <laughs> actually sees um things like with their eyes i'm not that type but it's more an impression of the word of god mm -hmm. um upon my life being applied to uh situations prophetically i should say it like that to okay. speak um to the so times and seasons of the time mm -hmm. and so it's more like there are times where um i could say god used me to prophesy but anybody can say that and you know they shouldn't be quick to claim that, that it was from prophet. the Lord. <laughs> or, or even if it was from the Lord, okay, just because God used you one time to do something don't mean that's your whole ministry that you should pursue. But he kept bringing me back to that call of being a watchman and helping me understand I'm calling you to sound the alarm. What does that look like? Who are you sounding the alarm to? What mm -hmm. would cause you to, to make an alarm? And so he just made me more sensitive to the things that, is important to the Lord, you know, and mm -hmm. making the church aware of what's important to him because he has his own feeling. He's the person. He has his own feelings, opinions, ideas, mm -hmm. um, priorities about things. And so it's really bringing people into understanding who Christ is. 
Amen. Okay. So you also, you've mentioned this a lot during our conversation. You founded the Watchman Society and Kingdom Media Foundation. Did you publish a book through them as well? Or how, how was the connection? Yes. Um, so the Watchman Society is uh, the ministry of young, uh, young prophets and apostles who are being built up and learning how to be, be oracles or speakers who would go out and minister, just teaching them the foundations of it and then giving them opportunities to, to flow and minister mm-hmm. in different places. That's what it started out as. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kingdom Media Foundation was there. Yeah, that was what I published under when I was publishing okay. our book and our music and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Self-published. Let's get all of the coins. <laughs> bring them Let's home. Them. <laughs> yeah, bring them home. <laughs> Flip that into something greater. God did it. Amen. So how do you how do you um <laughs> how do you market? Like how is the business side working out with 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 your spiritual life, your spiritual duties, um, being a husband, a dad? Just how how do you keep it all together? Like I'm always curious how how performers or people that have to be out in front of crowds or people that have to market, you know, to provide. I'm always curious, like, what's your hustle like? So I told you about this comeback story of rebuilding. So I'm, I'm going to mm-hmm. speak to how I used to how I used to do it, because now this would be my first book in about four or five years that I put out. So I'm going to do it differently this time. But okay. how I used to do it was, of course, when I would go to the um, preaching engagements or we would go to whatever festivals or whatever had uh, vendor set up, you know, we'd set up and just talk to people about the book. This is the, the gra- grassroots side, not the mm-hmm. um, not the media side, but just we being out there. Yeah. Yeah, where people were, uh, were at and when we got an opportunity to sing um, or do whatever, then we would set up and just people would be, of course, the sales would go up higher when you're actually somewhere doing something live and people can mm-hmm. experience what you're doing as opposed to them not knowing who you are and you putting some mass marketing campaign out on the internet and people don't even know you. So you much of it has to do yeah. with the uh, circles and the uh, opportunities I had, the friendships, the kingdom relationships, and where I would move through that. Now I'm in a whole different city, don't have the same base that I had and so I am moving more into more of the social media, but I'm still going to have to get out there. And that's that's mm-hmm. what I'm doing now, bringing it back out. But the word was so um, rich in me to write this book. I knew it had to be more of an artifact. I, I pray that God would breathe on it and make it a bestseller. But more so than that, it was meant to just document and to to preserve in the earth what he had to say about relationships and communication it had to be there. And so it's going to spread out. I don't know what he's going to do with it, how fast he's going to do it, but I know in the long run, it's going to hit everybody it's supposed to hit. Amen. That's the goal. That's the most yeah. important goal. Feed the sheep. But are you feeding my sheep? Right. <laughs> oh, but Lord, I'm sorry, but are you feeding my sheep? Right. <laughs> like, I will sustain you. Just take mm-hmm. care of what I asked. Yeah. It's bringing absolutely. back to that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I believe that you you don't go through that kind of relational trauma and all that just to mm-hmm. just say, I went through it without blessing other people with the wisdom you gain from it. So that's. <laughs> And I, it's really also to encourage other people, do the same. Your story needs to be heard. Um, people need to tell their stories. You don't have to be really an author to preserve your story. You can find some other kind of way to get it out. But, you know, we, we are called to be living epistles. So people should be able to be inspired by whatever journey we had. Somebody, whoever was designed to hear it. Exactly. And, you know, it's not for everybody, but somebody, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to be assigned to your voice, to your product, to whatever God put inside of you to do. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. This is your time to plug, sir. Please let our listeners know how they can support you, how they can get a copy of Deep Flow, how they can find out about any upcoming um, projects that you have, any platforms that you utilize. Please plug away. Okay, so you can find Deep Flow, um, which is my latest book, The Governmental Sound, or any of my other books on Amazon. That's where I'm mainly at now. You could also go to TerrenceFrederick.com. 
Um, I'm, about, I'm about to rebuild my site, but right now you can still go there. You can find me on Facebook and D- DM me. I'm going to have something later on, but everything, all you got to do is put me in Terrence Frederick Ministries on uh, social media, wherever you put it, and you'll find me there. And I have links to how you can get more of the products and ministry engagements and resources we have, especially for young people coming up who mm-hmm. you have a word in your belly and you need some wisdom on how to move correct, you know, go ahead and check it out. Deep Flow, Terrence Frederick. Or you could also um, look up Chief Servant on um, YouTube and you'll find me there as well. Amen. Amen. I'm glad you have these platforms so people can reach out, get in contact with you and um, continue to support you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Batman, do you have any last words for Terrence Frederick? Yeah, you know, like, like I say, I knew my spirit told me this this was going to be a deep story. <laughs> You know, I like the deep ones. <laughs> I, I like the deep ones. I can't. Well, I won't say I can't stand, but it makes a much better interview when yeah. they when they have me? substance. Hey, you heard me? <laughs> yes. yeah. you heard me telling you. I, I told you. I said I, I, had, I had a good feeling about this one. It was going to be one of those yeah. Kelly Holland type interviews. You know, I'm all in your business. Like, right. What you do? What happened? <laughs> How did God save you? <laughs> I can relate. Because you know what? And I was thinking about this earlier when you told me about how you had to start afresh and start anew. And then you're you're living in your purpose. And then here come this test. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You didn't call it that. But that's exactly what happened when the church ended up finding out your business. You know, that was the mm-hmm. test. How are you going to handle this? You going <laughs> to continue to feed my sheep or you going to put your tail in between your legs and walk off and go back to a life that's easy and comfortable mm-hmm. instead of the one that you have purpose to accomplish? Amen. Go Come probably. On, yes. yes. Right. The Lord is mighty. Yes. All Speaking right. <laughs> <laughs> it came up two times and I forgot to say it. I said, no, nah, this need to come out. It came back again. Oh, that's so, <laughs> so, so, Pastor, is, is, your, is your book available in audio, audio books, Kendall? So now that's a great question. I'm glad you asked that question. I have a few people ask me that already. Not yet. Mm-hmm. That's a whole other project I'm going to do. It's not it's on funny. audio yet. Who's going to narrate it? Are you going to get one of those James Earl Jones voices? <laughs> He's the speaker himself, so he could do it himself. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that, too. I had some different ideas about whether I wanted to narrate the whole thing or do an abridged version mm-hmm. or even incorporate some other voices just so people won't hear the same voice. But yeah. It all depends. I'm still thinking on that. But, yeah, that's, right. that's going to be in the work, sir. Yeah, because I'm going to tell you, man, I love audio books. I mean, I, I, I yeah. listen to them all the time. And it's funny because my mom is a big reader. And, mm-hmm. and we'll hook up sometime and start talking about a book. She said, when did you read that book? I said, yesterday. No, you didn't. <laughs> but I'll but I be throwing stuff on her. Cause just like her favorite author is Booker T. Washington. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. And, and Carver and all those guys. But I can retain everything when I hear it. And um, I'll be throwing yeah. it at her. She said, wait a minute. I got to go check that reference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <But you> don't. <laughs> that's 52 minutes and 30 seconds here yes. we go <laughs> some, of them, some of them suckers are like 16 hours yeah oh i'm sure that man yeah. i'm sure but, but let us know when it when it released because I'm, I'm very close with dr west so i'm sure she'll put it out there on uh, social media when it's ready um definitely do that man yeah, yeah. But that's a big yeah, whole industry yeah that, Media, is, uh, yeah, that audio is, book. yeah, that industry is humongous, man, especially with the amount of people that's commuting now. Mm-hmm. That's what they do now. Instead of wasting time listening to the stupid music, <laughs> some of the music don't that's make right. no sense, you know. True. That or awesome. a podcast or something, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Educate yourself. That's right. There we go. All right. <laughs> Full circle, Batman. Full yeah. circle. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, so so it's time to turn on your minister side. Can you please pray us out, Amen. Sir Terrence oh, Frederick? Exactly. <laughs> yes, okay. yes, Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be alive and in your presence. We thank you for blessing us with all the blessings you've given us. We thank you for giving us the awareness of knowing who you are and and how to come to you. And Lord, we, Father, we just thank you right now for the listeners out there from listening from different walks of life, different countries, different nations, and going through various trials and tribulations. I just pray that you would comfort them, give them peace, give them wisdom so they can move how they need to move to advance in your kingdom and to expand your territory. 
And we just pray ahead to protection over them as they pursue your works. And we just bless you and honor you in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Please come back whenever you uh, want to, but not just when you drop new stuff. There might be another story, and I'm sure there are more that you want to share with Chief. So we'd be happy to have you. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Good being here. I appreciate y'all. Hey, man, I thought I was going to be talking to somebody over in the motherland. I t- <laughs> I'm like, I wonder what time it is. <laughs> oh, I think you said are. South Kakalaki. I thought like, oh, he down the road. Yeah, <laughs> he down like the road. That. I don't know, man. Just- <laughs> I don't know how I got that mixed up. I know you said one of your friends from over there called you, but I don't know how I yeah. it was Mr. Frederick. Yeah, you, you okay, I just it. thought I wanted to share that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad, Mr. The Fredericks from North Carolina because we could vibe on some of the same stuff. I'm going to tell you, hey, Pastor, <laughs> have, have you traveled up this way? Have you been in the Maryland area, D.C. before? No, I had a lot of friends. My father's in the military, so I had a lot of friends from that area, from D.C., Baltimore area. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, well, I can say you guys got some fresh air in South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell the difference right away. Breath. As soon as I got deep off, breath, the, got on the runway, I was like, "Whoa, the air is different." Is like, it good? When was that time you been in South Carolina? I know you. It was. Uh, I was there in um, in July. It was like oh, real okay. oxygen. So you come through. Yeah, it was like oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> oh really? I need to get some of that in my life. We are yeah. we inhaling the harbor because I'm, I'm about to die. Like we inhaling a months. lot of stuff here. That's what we got. That's what we take a lot of supplements in this area. Oh Lord Jesus! The industry is blowing up. We in a toxic yeah, environment. <laughs> it's slower down there. I don't know if I can handle it. Look, that's my rowdy side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two days that's is like my a rowdy slow down. It is slow. <laughs> That's all right. It's all good. <laughs> but thank you again for joining us. Please continue to uh, listen in um, and please come back. And thank you all for joining us this evening for Positive Power Double XI. You have experienced Late Night with Jerry Royce Live with Kelly Holland. And never forget, please join us every Thursday from 10 to 11. Look at you, Batman. Look at you. You just won't let me finish. Thank My you. <laughs> Please join us every Thursday <laughs> from 10 to 11 p.m. And never forget to tap back into your unspeakable joy. Good night, everybody. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. Positive power 21. Internet radio. You are listening to Jerry Royce Live Worldwide Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. My name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I live in Dominican Republic. I'm here, Positive Power 21. Jerry Royce Live Worldwide. Thank you, family, for joining us. Thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed the interview. Kelly rocked it. Oh, yeah, she rocked it. Well, have a great weekend. We'll see you guys Monday with Kimmy Kim. we got another exciting guest. Keep tuning in. Uh, I'll see you guys uh, hitting us up on Facebook, so you can look forward to seeing it every day, Monday through Thursday. Well, that's not every day, but Monday through Thursday. You can catch us on Facebook Live and YouTube. Just look for Jerry Rose Live or The Weekend Channel. That's right, TheWeekendChannel.tv on YouTube. Roku, Apple, and Amazon Fire. Take care, everybody. We'll see you real soon. Peace out. Voice, aka Lady Wisdom, with Beyond the Moment. It's sometimes difficult to see beyond the moment when you're in the midst of a crisis.